Hey everyone, let's get you updated for the, okay, let me see. Today is around four o'clock on January the 21st. It is Tuesday. I know we're doing updates, but I wanted to make sure time-wise we get everything right. We're joined by our state climatologist, Jay Grimes. Jay, um, I guess first off, I need to ask you, so have we made the mark of this now being a historic snow event or not yet? Well, it's, it's historic no matter how you want to look at it. Maybe not the biggest snow event on the record books. That one actually hopefully will never be exceeded. That's back in 1895 where we had double digit totals across virtually all of South Louisiana. But I'm thinking that this is going to end up ranking as the second or third biggest snow event for South Louisiana. Uh, certainly going to be that way for a number of sites. And sometimes it's kind of how you look at the numbers, whether it gets there or not. For, but for Baton Rouge, it's probably going to be the second biggest snowstorm. For New Orleans, it's probably going to be the second biggest snowstorm. You get the idea. It's a monster event. And, you know, one of the things I've been telling and even uh, in our dis my discussion with the, uh, the governor earlier today, I mean, so now we've gone through the, the Hollywood part, the gee whiz part, the good fun of a big snowstorm, a storm that most of your folks following you have never seen before. Um, and personally, I hope we never see again. Uh, but that's the fun part. That's over, the big snow. Now comes the work. And we're talking about bitterly cold, in fact, dangerously cold temperatures tonight into the day on Wednesday, and then a hard freeze again Wednesday night into Thursday. So the real impacts, and we even talked about this a little bit uh, yesterday, I believe, the snow is one thing, but the temperatures really are going to be the things that do the biggest damage here. And tonight, for your, your folks uh, that are following and listening, Look, if you didn't get the pipes wrapped last night, don't think that that was your test case. The test will be tonight. We're looking at temperatures down in the teens by daybreak tomorrow. Some places could get down as cold as 10 degrees for wow. that temperature overnight. I think right now the weather service is going 11 or 12 for Baton Rouge. Now that's way down there. That's getting near all-time record lows. Not quite that. And then you factor in even just modest winds tonight, and many uh, neighborhoods are going to be looking at wind chills in the single digits. So we didn't get below freezing today for many, above freezing today for many locations, and we'll barely get above freezing tomorrow. Jay, talk to us about what has the accumulation been, like if there are any numbers, and is the snow over with now for majority of our viewing area? For our area, it's effectively over. You may still see some flakes or some little uh, uh, specks of snow here, but the accumulations are done. And that's, as far as I'm concerned, I'm good with that. We're looking at widespread uh, six, seven, eight inch snow totals across the area. And to put that in perspective, for Baton Rouge, the second greatest snow event was around six, six and a half inches of snow. So we're going to be right there or above it when we finally come up with the, the hard and fast numbers. Uh, so this has been a major event. And by the way, this swath of big snows extends all the way over to the Sabine. They've got snow totals of five, seven, even eight to 10 inches of snow between uh, Lake Charles into Baton Rouge. And the snow got a little farther north than we thought it would too. Uh, snow totals of around two inches or so as far north as Alexandria. So it's been a big swath. It's still snowing here at uh, what, four o'clock as we go uh, uh, into the evening. It's still snowing in the southeastern parishes. And it looks like even New Orleans could be maybe not breaking their all-time snow record, but finishing up with their second or third is greatest amount on record. So this is definitely a historic event, even though it may not be the all-time record event. Jay, what is the most important thing that you feel people need to hear? You carry a lot of weight with our viewership. You're the state climatologist now. You're guiding things for the state as well. And in fact, we were just talking about it. State offices just announced that they will be closed on Thursday. Yes, that might upset some people, but there's a reason that was done. 
That is, there's a big reason for that. Okay, so to me now, as I said, now the work begins. It's the temperatures. In fact, all during this event, while I certainly was talking about the snow totals because I knew they were going to be uh, uh, eye-catching, but it really is about these temperatures. Tonight is a night where most homes just aren't built to handle a run of 10, 12, 15 hours at or below the mid-20s temperatures to get down into the teens. So you've got a heating issue inside homes tonight. Uh, I don't think you need to press any harder the, the, the role or the concern about pipes freezing tonight. If you haven't ripped your pipes, please get it done. Tonight is going to be that night that will really test uh, your capability to handle uh, uh, this kind of bitter cold with the freezing uh, conditions and particularly with uh, uh, pipes. The, uh, the other thing is that, again, even though we're going to get some sunshine tomorrow, we're going to be lucky to get above freezing. And if we do on Wednesday get above freezing, it's only going to be a couple of hours. So from a warming standpoint, essentially we're below freezing now and we're going to stay there, effectively stay below freezing into Thursday morning. That is a prolonged stretch of cold weather that's going to challenge people in terms of internal uh, home comfort. So we got to remind people not only about the pipes, but be uh, extra, extra careful with the supplemental heating. You know, if you've got a space heater, if you're even using a fireplace, uh, you know, I don't encourage people that use stoves. But look, with this kind of cold, you're going to do whatever you can. Just remember, shut all of those down before you go to bed. Don't leave them up overnight. Uh, that's where we see the house fires. We've already seen a couple of fires in Louisiana because of the cold now. We're going to see more from people that just make poor decisions in terms of that supplemental heat, not only tonight, but again, on a Thursday night into Friday. I really think that the temperature is the biggest thing here. Plus, the other thing is, being that it's going to stay that cold tomorrow, most of the roads that don't get plowed are going to still be dealing with uh, freezing conditions in the morning tomorrow, and it'll all refreeze again Thursday night into fr uh, uh, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And that's part of the thinking here that the governor and the uh, UCG uh, used to make this decision about closing on Thursday. Thursday morning travel particularly in the rural areas and even some suburban areas, Thursday morning travel is still going to be hazardous, if not downright treacherous. And so the idea is minimize the number of people that are going to be on the roads, give the schools sort of a that gunpowder, if you will, to make the option to stay closed again, because you don't want, it's not only the buses, it's not only that transportation, but we're also talking about, young people that drive to school, you know, 16, 17 year olds that just are not in any way at all prepared for these kind of road conditions. So it's just a matter of being judicious, being prudent about closing on Thursday as well. Even though, as you pointed out right at the top, some people on Thursday morning are going to be scratching their head saying, why did we do this? Yep. It's just the smart thing to do. Do you think there will be a warm up after Thursday or even during the day Thursday? Well, Thursday will at least get up into the 40s. That'll be the end of the bitter cold, but we'll still have a cold night Thursday night into Friday. Then the warming really kicks back in and by the weekend. We could be back in the 60s. So think about what we've just experienced. It was the upper 70s on Saturday. Now we're looking at near record lows tonight. And then five days from now, we'll be back into spring-like weather. Typical for Louisiana in the sense of that roller coaster ride, it's just this time the roller coaster is a huge plummet, and it happens tonight. Absolutely. Well, if you don't like the weather, just wait 24 hours. Isn't that what we say down here in Louisiana? It's something like that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Jay, as always, we thank you, appreciate all your input. We're going to continue to keep people updated through you. And if there's anything else that we need to update, then just don't hesitate. And to our viewers, thank you guys. We will continue to keep you updated on all platforms of Unfiltered with Kieran. Thanks, Kieran.